So in my last video, I may have been a bit, let's say, unappreciative of everything Apple has done in the last oh, three or so years to innovate and revolutionize not only the Mac, but Final Cut Pro as well. There's no doubt that the introduction of the M1 processor lineup to the Mac has been both revolutionary and magical. We all have looked to Apple over the years to bring us products that are so integral to our everyday lives and work so well that they honestly feel at times like magic. My house is full of Apple products. Apple TV, HomePod Mini, two MacBook Pros, a Mac Pro, four iPhones, four iPad Minis, an Airport Extreme, Thunderbolt displays, cinema displays, an Apple Watch, and they all have improved my quality of life significantly. At this month's event, Apple floored us with the performance promises of the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in the new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros. I financed a brand new 14-inch MacBook Pro the minute the event was over because I knew this product had to be the newest tool in my arsenal. So I got that hit of magic that I was hoping for. So these new machines have me psyched for the new Final Cut Pro update. Then they released the Final Cut Pro 10.6 update and my initial reaction was, Meh. Why was it that way? Object tracking, cool. Editing cinematic mode video, awesome. So first off, object tracking. I rarely use it. Maybe I will a bit more now that I've got the Apple version of it, but it's not going to have much of an impact on my daily use of the software. And cinematic mode not only requires Mac OS Monterey, which isn't available at the time of making this video, but I will probably never use cinematic mode in my client work or on my YouTube channel unless I'm directly demonstrating it. So Another feature update that doesn't really impact my daily workflow in any truly meaningful way. So that left under the hood improvements to Final Cut Pro and under the hood essentially translates to nothing you're going to see or feel every second you're using Final Cut Pro. At least that's what it means to me. Now don't get me wrong, the performance enhancements we're seeing out of these new MacBook Pros when it comes to exporting H.264 and ProRes is absolutely insane. Just look at these numbers coming from Rene Ritchie on a 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. And this is where I know I'm going to feel the magic I'm hoping for when my 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro gets here. Currently it takes me about three hours to export a 12 ish minute 4K YouTube vid shot in XF ABC on my C300 Mark II to 4K H.264 on my 2013 quad core Mac Pro. I'm guessing my new export time will be under 30 minutes for that same vid on this new computer. Computer, which is amazing. And that to me is absolutely the definition of magic. It's almost honestly a miracle and it's going to completely change how I work as a content creator, no doubt about it. So for that, I'm incredibly grateful for this new hardware and the under the hood updates to Final Cut Pro 10.6. But had I not purchased a $2,600 MacBook Pro, this Final Cut Pro 10.6 update would be, for me, essentially meaningless. And I'm sure for many of you who are not getting a new M1 Mac, the 10.6 update is also meaningless and very much underwhelming because it's not doing anything to get you something you can see and feel every day while you use the software. But here's the thing. We've been getting mostly under the hood updates to Final Cut Pro for the last, I'd say three years. Have there been some new features added? Absolutely. Some UI enhancements? Of course. In 2017, we got FCP 10.4, which gave us 360 VR editing, something I'll never do. It got us all new color grading controls and HDR compatibility. It was a huge update and we were all, I think, really excited about it. In November of 2018 though, we got the comparison viewer, the time code window, batch sharing and workflow extensions. Pretty cool. And then in October, 2019, we got a big under the hood upgrade that saw Final Cut optimized for metal based processing, which helped to improve playback and accelerate graphics tasks. This coincided with the release of the all new 2019 Mac Pro. Great. Optimizing for metal, paving the way for things to get even better under the hood as they, behind the scenes, developed M1. We got a much needed and long overdue update in August of 2020 to proxy workflows. This gave pros much needed control over how proxies were made, their resolution, the ability to create a proxy only version of a library, as well as being able to view proxy media simultaneously with original or optimized media, something we all had been dying to see since Final Cut Pro 10 was released nearly 10 years earlier. We also got smart conform and tools to adjust ProRes raw footage. All of 2020 saw mostly under the hood improvements as Apple rolled out the all new M1 processor. And then for all of 2021, the biggest upgrade to FCP was arguably an enhancement to the browser where you could create and edit custom column views with the new column editor 
and you had new search and sorting options for media as well. Awesome, but not that exciting. So from November 2018 to now, October 2021, we really didn't see the amount of feature updates we were all hoping for. Yes, the proxy workflow update was long overdue and very much welcome. ProRes RAW is really cool, but not compatible with DaVinci Resolve, so a lot of pros aren't using it, because what's the point if you can't use it for color in Resolve? In the meantime, Blackmagic has been flying through updates to the entire DaVinci Resolve suite of apps editing, color, audio, and visual effects, all within DaVinci Resolve, and making some really meaningful enhancements to their software. And at the same time, they've been keeping pace with Apple's use of Metal and their M1 line of Apple Silicon. They have been making under-the-hood improvements to DaVinci Resolve while at the same time updating features and the UI at a rapid pace. Blackmagic has been delivering both and it's a company, I would think, with far fewer resources than the trillion dollar Apple Inc. Why is this? Why is Blackmagic innovating so rapidly both under the hood and in features users can see and feel and be thankful for in their everyday workflows? And the answer is, I don't know. Can you use the COVID-19 pandemic as an excuse? Apple would have released more meaningful updates to Final Cut Pro had the pandemic never happened. Who knows? Or was it all hands on deck to focus on optimizing Final Cut Pro for Metal and M1? And the few features enhancements we got that we can see and feel were the bare minimum the marketing team demanded in order to demonstrate just how M1 and the new features on the iPhone 13 Pro cinematic mode work together in the Apple Pro apps ecosystem. I don't know, but I know how I feel. And I feel like Final Cut should be much further along than it is. It should be more strongly considered by high-end pro workflows like you see in film and TV and have the features and performance that make it the obvious choice for indie, aspiring, and amateur filmmakers, as well as social media content creators, even in the face of Final Cut Pro costing $299 versus nothing free for DaVinci Resolve. So I am grateful that I'm going to be able to export a 15-minute YouTube film on my new 14-inch MacBook Pro in about an eighth of the time it would take me on my base model 2013 Mac Pro. I'm grateful that if I wanted to, I could play back in real time seven streams of 8K ProRes. I love that the Mac with Final Cut Pro has such amazing performance. But why can't Apple deliver both? Why can't Apple make meaningful feature and UI enhancements to Final Cut and performance upgrades at the same time? Why can't we get an update that lets us change the names of our color grading adjustments? Why can't we get an update that lets us lock or pin the custom LUT effect to the top layer of our grading adjustments so we don't have to constantly rearrange them so our grade is applied correctly? Why can't we get an update that lets us view the inside of a compound clip in our current timeline so we can see its contents in the context of our edit? Why can't we get an update that lets us flatten a multicam for our Final Cut Pro to DaVinci Resolve workflows? Why can't we get an update that lets us export an AAF for sound mixing and Pro Tools? Why can't we get an update that lets us do asymmetrical transitions like Resolve can do? Why can't we get an update that makes transitions transparent or even semi-transparent so we can see what's going on underneath them? Why can't we get an update that gives us Bezier curves for keyframes? And why can't we get an update that allows multiple editors to access and work on a shared library at the same time. I get it, the last one I'm sure is incredibly complicated, but some of those I know have been requested a gazillion times and still nothing. Does Apple care about editors who want to work in high-end post-production workflows like film and television? Or does Apple just want to keep the software relatively simple so that you can use it for film and TV if you really want to, but that the masses don't have a piece of software that's so complex and disorienting that they don't want to try to learn it? Is Apple aiming at really satisfying just some of their users, or are they hoping to make it a piece of software that's good for a 14-year-old YouTuber as well as a veteran feature film editor who needs all the tools that Avid has and more. Are we on the cusp of some serious, serious improvements to the everyday features of Final Cut Pro now that all of the under the hood improvements to Metal and M1 have been accomplished? Maybe they all haven't been accomplished. Is there more that needs to be addressed? Nobody knows. And that's also part of the frustration. We have no idea what Apple is thinking. And those of us who both love this software and are driven nuts by the absence of several key features we are dying to have are left trying to read between the lines of Apple's website, 
their marketing videos touting pro filmmakers using their products, and the release notes of every Final Cut update. We're trying to figure out what the future holds for Final Cut Pro when we wish Apple would just give us some kind of clue as to how far they're going to push the Pro in Final Cut Pro. And my feelings on that specifically seem to change on a daily basis. Some days I think they only care about YouTubers. Other days, I am certain they're doing everything they can to make producers, post-production supervisors, and editing teams disrupt the Hollywood machine and go all in with Final Cut Pro. You know, another thing, maybe I'm greedy. Maybe I'm taking Final Cut Pro for granted. I don't know. I'm certainly grateful to everyone working their butts off at Apple on the Final Cut Pro team. I would never want to come across as not understanding how complex an app like Final Cut Pro must be. I applaud all of you for your efforts, especially over the last three years, as you have, I'm sure, rewritten major chunks of the software to be optimized for Metal and M1. I just kind of wish I could rename the color grade effects I apply to my clips. Is that too much to ask? Maybe 10.6.1? One can hope. So what do you all think? Hit me up in the comments with how you feel about the last few years with Final Cut Pro and what the future holds for this lovable, yet sometimes incredibly frustrating app. Thanks for watching everyone. Like, share, subscribe, click all the things, and until the next one, I'll see you all soon.